I recorded a video earlier today about how we can uh, manage our energy and I wanted to address the fact that sometimes um, managing your energy just isn't enough. So I think of energy management as something that you need to do when um, you are managing to juggle all of the balls. So, you know, we, we think about women have a lot of plates spinning or, or, or juggling a lot of balls. And sometimes we drop a plate, drop a ball, whatever, and, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't go as, as well as we would like. Sometimes it we're just tearing our hair out, but we're managing to do the important things. We might not feel happy, we might not feel fulfilled, we might not think we're doing those things well, but on the whole, we're doing them. You know, we're getting through the day, we're doing them. But sometimes, um, everything we're having to do, all of those balls in the air, all of those plates that we're juggling get too much, and they just come crashing down. And that's what happened to me a few years ago. It started off as work-related stress and I had always been resilient. I took everybody else's stress on my shoulders because I wanted to make it better for them. I, I, I'm an empath, so people used to come to me and they'd pour out, of, pour out their troubles and I'd say to them, right, as I, I, you know, I was their manager, I was an operational manager, so I'd say to them, right, what are we gonna do about this? How can we help? Uh, how can I help? What are we going to do? And they'd say, you know what? I just feel better. Now I've talked about it. I feel better. And great. I felt good that they felt better. But I was exhausted. I used to take on board all of that. And I used to lie awake at night thinking how I could make things better for the people that worked for me. And for a long time, that was okay. I was resilient. I, I thought of myself as strong. I was good at my job. Um... I enjoyed my job, I enjoyed the people side of things, I enjoyed problem solving, so for a long time that was okay. But there came the stage where it was just too much. There was just too much going on at home, there was too much going on at work, um, there wasn't enough control over my job. I remember when, th when things changed and we had more consultants come into the department and something I'd been asking for for a long time. And it was fantastic, it was great. Um, I had people in the department agreeing with me that things needed to change, but the powers that be recognised the problem, eventually after me shouting about the problem for a long time, the powers that be recognised the problem, but had their own ideas of how things should change, um, and they didn't have the understanding that the people in there had. So it was all very frustrating and led to a total lack of a lack of control, I suppose, whereas before there was frustration, but there was nobody else trying to do anything about it. So it was all on my shoulders, as it were. And that was easier to to um, to deal with than having people come in who had responsibility to make change, but didn't have the understanding to make the change. So anyway, that, that's by the by. Work-related stress led to depression, anxiety, um, it led to me being ill, not not being able to, to function effectively, not, not being able to function at all, eventually. And for a long time I really struggled with that. Um, I, I lost my identity, I didn't know who I was anymore, I didn't know that I wasn't this strong person that I used to be, how could I be if I'd had to take time off work. And I really, really, really struggled with it. And by this time, some of the tips that I share now about energy management, by this time, things that I'm talking, I have talked about, sometimes talk about, are too late. I had dropped those balls. I had, those plates had smashed. My my world was falling apart. It was too late for, for energy management. It was time now for healing. And... This, at, at first, when I had no choice but to leave that job, I was all about achievement, achieving my goals, starting my business, helping others, achieving my goals. And it stopped, that stopped me from 
healing the trauma that I'd gone through. The, at the time, I would have said it's not a trauma. I would have said it's, you know, I can deal with this. I'm strong. I can deal with this. It's behind me. I've just got to move forward. Um, but looking back, it was a trauma. It had a huge impact on who I was and how I felt about myself and the beliefs I had about myself. So it meant I had to take time out to heal and it, I was totally resistant against that and I think most people who are in that stage where the plates have dropped, the balls have dropped, that the, you know, the life has fallen apart. I think most people who feel like that, um, they want to, 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 they want answers, they want solutions and there aren't solutions, uh, there aren't there aren't easy answers. I wanted to put a label on what I'd gone through. And uh, the doctors diagnosed me with depression. I went for counseling, I took the medication. I read book, I, I'm a learner, I want to learn. So I read book after book and I, and I, certain aspects of depression fitted and certain aspects don't. Now I think, um, I think there's some hormonal changes going on. I thought it was, I think it was the start of the menopause, which started some hormone, hormonal changes. Um, and I think it was adrenal fatigue. And I think it all led to burnout. And what I've learned is the label doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we call it. It doesn't matter whether you call it depression, exhaustion. It doesn't matter whether it's stress related. It doesn't matter um, if we put a label on it. It does, you know, I, I remember somebody Oh, what was the label? What was the, the term that somebody said about somebody else? And I thought, I bet they're saying that about me now. Somebody had said, uh, somebody I worked with had said about a colleague, um, oh, she had a breakdown. She had a nervous breakdown. And I remember afterwards thinking, I bet that's what they were saying about me at work. I bet they said I had a nervous breakdown. And it made me start thinking, did I have a nervous breakdown? What the hell's a nervous breakdown? I don't, you know, we, we change, doctors change the terms for things. But what I realize now that it doesn't matter what label you put on it it doesn't matter i went through something devastating it changed my life looking back i learned a lot about myself about life it's made me a better person it's made me a nicer person it's made me a more confident person um what, so what I'm what I'm trying to tell you, if you're going through that now, if you're in that phase now where you're just in that black pit of despair, scrabbling to get out, desperate to get out, desperate for life to get back to normal, what I want you to understand is the labels you put on it aren't important. The labels of the people put in it aren't important. Yes, go to the doctor. Um, yes, talk to counsellors. Yes, talk to the people in your life and try and explain what you're going through. Don't worry about not understanding it. It's not important. It's just part of the process. The thing, the main thing that kept me going throughout what I went through was an undeniable belief that everything would be okay. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, but I knew that I would come out of this a stronger person, a better person. I knew I would look back and saying I would be glad it happened is, is, is hard to do, but I knew that it was all about perspective. I knew that I could look back on everything that happened and learn lessons from it. And um, it wouldn't ruin my life because I was the kind, I, I am the kind of person that believes we have control over what happens in our life. And obviously there was something there that didn't happen and that was why it was hugely difficult at the time. But I knew going forward, I could, um, get to a place of peace with this where I didn't feel like my life was out of control anymore. And I didn't know how. I, I didn't know how that would look. I didn't know when it would happen. I just knew without any shadow of a doubt that I would be okay, that this would be okay. Everything would be okay. So that's what got me through it. Um, like I say, I did make the mistake of falling into my default behaviour of wanting to achieve the next step. So I was desperate to get out of depression. I was 
desperate to um, get back to normal. When I realised I couldn't do that job again, it was just too difficult. There was too many... There was too many... It was too... There was too much emotional attachment to it. So I needed something different. And, and now looking back, I know that it was the burnout. I had nothing left to give, absolutely nothing left to give. So if you've got to that place where you've got nothing left to give, you just have to get through it and know that everything's going to be okay. But I wanted to share the main things that helped me get through that time. And you may think, you, there, there may be things you've heard of or there may be things you think are too um, easy or a bit woo-woo, not your sort of thing, but I'd ask you to give them a go, give them a try. One of the things that helped me enormously was gratitude, keeping a, a gratitude journal and I, I wrote blog posts about it. Um, but when you're in that state of utter despair, it's easy to forget how much you've got still. You know, when you're finding it hard to um, cope, especially if you're on a reduced pay, if you're finding it hard to cope financially, it's very easy to forget how lucky you still are. So one of the things that I found grateful was gratitude. I would write lists and lists of things I was grateful for. On the worst days, I would write a list of 100 things I was grateful for. Because the first 10, 15 things you write down, you know, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for my house, I'm grateful for the food. They're, they're the things that come easily to us. But when you're getting further down the list, you know, getting to 40, 50 things, then you're really struggling to think of things. But those things you come up with are actually things you should really, truly be grateful for. Um, we forget about the people who are starving all over the world. We forget about the people in war-torn war countries. But we, we have a lot to feel grateful for. And it has been proven that the science proves that um, it affects our feelings, our emotions. Gratitude affects how we feel about things. Um, so gratitude was a huge thing for me. One of the other things for me was forgiveness, learning to forgive people. I felt a huge injustice about what was happening to me. Um, there was a stage where one person in particular did a lot to um, make me extremely unhappy and make me extremely angry. And at the time I thought they were doing something to me, looking back, it was just their inadequacies, their um, inability to communicate their, their unhappiness. You know, only hurt people hurt others. That, that's what I've learned. So one, it took me a long time, but one of the, the things that I took away from what I went through was the power of forgiveness. It is hard to forgive, but when we are hanging on to that hurt around um, something or someone, you, we hurt ourselves. It's ourselves that's hurting. You know that. It's that um, holding on to, anger is like holding on to um, a hot stone. There's a I uh, can't remember the quote now, but it, it hurts us. It doesn't hurt anybody else. When you can let go of that, you can start to heal. And that was something that um, is so simple. It took me a long time to learn, but it is so simple and um, made a huge difference. Um, so, gratitude, forgiveness, um, not putting a label on things I've already mentioned was a huge thing for me. Not worrying about knowing the outcome, letting go, letting go of the attachment to what all of this meant about me was a huge thing. And letting go of um, the identity I had for myself. I, I thought the only thing that I was good at 
was my job. I didn't feel like I was a good mum. I didn't feel like I was a good wife, good daughter, any any of that sort of thing. But I knew I was good at my job. So when I found my job difficult, I really struggled. My my I lost all sense of my identity. And what I've learned now is my identity has nothing to do with my job. My identity is inside of me. It's um, much deeper than my job. And it's when you're going through that, you don't know what your identity what your true identity is it's something you have to rebuild but if you can let go of the attachment that um, you as a person is a strong person who goes to work who you know who takes care of the kids who earns a living and all the rest of it if you let go of whatever your identity you've given yourself you will make it much easier to move on to heal and to find the real you the real you deep inside which is your your true identity rather than your ego that um you know you, the, the person you think you are or, or think you've been all of your life um another one that was again hugely difficult for me to learn was to ask for help and obviously I had to ask for help for my doctor when I when I was off work um I needed to get you know if it if I'm sure it'll be the same in every country, but certainly in the UK. I needed to get a sick note um, so that I would have time off work. So I had to get help. Um, doctors are very busy. They do the best they can, but they don't have an awful lot of time to spend with you. So quite often you come away with um, medication. And I'm not saying don't take medication. I am saying that don't rely solely on medication. I got counselling. It took a long time to get that counselling. I did get some counselling through work. Um, eventually I got counselling through the NHS. I saw several different counsellors. Some of them were more effective than others. Um, so don't see one person or talk to one person and think, well, that doesn't work for you because you will get different things from different people. And even if you're not getting the answers you want or you're not um, feeling as well as you want after talking to a counsellor and it's highly unlikely it would be doing any harm but also what other help can you get can you you know if, if you're having trouble um with childcare, you know you need you need you just haven't got the physical energy anymore and you need help with childcare. Are you taking all of the help you can get? Are you asking for help? Are you taking help? Um, but also, I think one of the really significant things is um, help around finances. And when, when well, first of all, when I was struggling to cope with my job, my way of um, numbing the feelings was to spend money and my, you know retail therapy was my thing it, all, it always has been or always was anyway um, some people will numb their feelings in in food or alcohol or whatever but for me I like to spend so there's only so much spending you can do before you uh, run into trouble and I, I'd never been great with money, but when my wages were halved, when I was first on the sick, and when I my wages were stopped, when I was on the sick even longer, money became a huge problem. Thankfully, my husband has a good job, but I earned a good income, and it became a huge problem. And for a long time, I ran away from that I didn't want to face that I thought you know what I'm going to do this that and the other I'll be back to work in a couple of weeks or something and it'll all be sorted out the money will be fine it'll all be sorted out but it went on and on and on and it became a huge problem to the extent that um I was frightened to answer the phone because it would be somebody asking for money and at the time I didn't tell my husband he knows now but he didn't know then and it was hugely stressful the money side of things was hugely stressful and I know there is a link between um, debt problems and mental health so if you are in that space where you are off work and you're not um, 
well, even if you are getting the pay, it's paid the same. If debt is an issue, you know, even if debt has always been an issue for you, but now you can't cope with it because you've got the, the added stress of um, work and everything that's going on there. If, if debt is an issue, ask for help. Um, I went to Step Change, a charity called Step, Step Change, and they were fantastic. And I think one of the things that stopped me going to them sooner was fear of being judged you know, I was supposedly intelligent. Um, how on earth could this happen to me? How could I get myself in this state? How how could I just keep my head in the sand for so long? But it was hugely beneficial for me to go to them. So if you're in that space, please get help. There are other charities out there that deal with finances, but please get help. And I was I was extremely surprised by how helpful the different um, financial institutions were. Not all of them, some of them were extremely helpful and some of them just did, did what they needed to do. But there are things in place that they need to do to help people who are having trouble with, um, with money, whether it's mentally health related or not. So um, I think they are the main things that I wanted to mention if you are in the space where it's the the energy energy management techniques that I mentioned are, are just too little too late if, if you've dropped the balls if the plates are smashing around you if, if life can't get much worse um understand it it will be okay and ask for help accept help Get help with finances if you need it. Forgive the people around you who are hurting you, who don't understand you. Um, be grateful for what you've got, what you have got. And I know it's hard, but there are always things to be grateful for. And be open to be open to new things coming your way. I think it's for a long time I couldn't accept that um, that I wouldn't go back to that job for a long time I thought that's all I could do when it became obvious that I couldn't go back to the job and I had to do something different I had to start looking around and it was it was very hard to um, to work out what I was going to do next I, I genuinely didn't think I had the ability to be an entrepreneur um, or to make money myself you know I thought I was going to end up working in a I don't know a shop or something which nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do but for a long time I wasn't um, I wasn't well enough to go into another job for a long time so I wanted to work for myself because um, it was the only way to protect myself to stop myself getting hurt again So what I'm saying is be open to um, doing something different. It may be a different career. It may be some, a, a career you never thought of. It may be self-employment. It may be setting up your own business. Don't ever think you can't do it. Don't think you haven't got something to give. Try and start the day with a sense of curiosity. You know, what could be out there what signs could you get from the universe whether you believe in the universe or whatever um, when we think about it from this point of view what signs could there be that um, I meant to do something different we just open our think thinking we expand our thinking and we start noticing new things and that's what led me to going on a two-day coaching course I'd done some coaching in my job um, being open to new experiences led me to going on a two-day coaching course. When it came around, I truly didn't think I had the mental energy, the capacity to, to go and sit in a room full of people with for two days as, as an introvert. Um, at the best of times, that wasn't something I wanted to do. But I booked the hotel and booked the course on a, on a positive day, on a good day. And I thought, if nothing else, I'll have two days locked in a hotel, in a room, on my own, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of the family. I'll just have some space to get my head straight. Um, and I went there and just, 
it was like a light bulb coming on. I knew that's what I wanted to do. The energy of the other people in the room just, just amazed me. Um, I just knew that's what I had to do. And I came back a different person. And it was still a long struggle after that. It was still a long struggle. But just opening myself up to something different, the possibilities that there might be something out there that I can do and can give me a different life, just opening myself up to that was was a huge um, shift in in my life. So I think I've covered the main points. points. Um, if I think of anything else, I will add them in the comments. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say that I, I know how difficult it is when you're in that pit of despair. I truly understand and there is no answer, there is no magic answer, there is no magic cure and I looked for it for a long time and there isn't one but it will be okay. I promise you it will be okay. I hope that helps.